Hey, y'all. So the Jackets played three games this week, and they all went well-ish. We won all three, so there's that, even if two of them went to overtime. The first game was Jackets at Carolina, which you won 2-1 in overtime, but it was boring. There were no fights, no one scored until the third. Ugh, it, like, it was a beautiful game for saves, I'll give it that, and the highlight reel will show you it, as it is almost entirely fantastic saves. But God, what a boring game. Games against Carolina are usually close, because especially in recent years, it's two fairly skilled games with good goaltenders playing against each other. And our play styles just cancel out so often that it can make for a slow game. Which, you know, isn't fun hockey. <laughs> Eventually, of course, it did speed up. Uh, Milano scored off the faceoff. He zoomed behind the goal and shot the puck in from this absolutely insane angle, and it slid in right in the gap between Darling's leg and glove. It was absolutely beautiful, and apparently something that he practices, because he knows that's a spot the most goalies don't have covered. Wild. This score also cemented Sonny Milano as into having a scoring streak of three games, tying the Jackets franchise re record for best start. The second goal was scored by Carolina after an honestly ridiculous turnover by Hannah Kynan. He tried to clear the puck, and then for some reason he fired the puck into the ether, and Carolina's resident tiny talented man, Jeff Skinner, was able to glove it down and get it headed back towards Bob into the back of the net. It was a silly, dumb mistake by a beer man. Near the, it was near the end of the third, and the Blue Jackets just were not able to push another goal in before we had to go into overtime. And then we suffered through the grind of overtime, and just as I thought that we would have to go into the dreaded shootout, Sonny Milano, future Calder Trophy winner, got a breakaway, sped down the ice, and backhanded it into the net. The Hurricane players couldn't catch him, and neither could Darling. The Jackets won, and it was beautiful. A uh, few things to note. First of all, just a fun fact, uh, this week on the Inside Edge with Bob McGilligan and Jody Shelley, Milano said that as he raced on the side of the rink, the Carolina Hurricanes players on the bench were yelling the timeout at him, which is both terrifying and hilarious. I would have probably died on the spot <laughs> if I was him. Secondly, the lines were thrown into a blender. It, they were all very mixed up during the game and before the game and in practice. It was a lot. In fact, Nick Foligno was playing as Milano's center when Sonny scored his first goal of the night. But it's promising that the boys are playing well, um, even with the lines weird. Even if it's <laughs> worrying, on the other hand, that the lines were mixed up because Torts was unhappy with production in the first place. What can you do? Finally, uh, Felinos described this game as a grind and said that games like these, ones that are close, that you have to really work for, are some of his favorite type. But honestly, <laughs> give me a 5-1 win. <laughs> I like easy games. <laughs> or give me something like that 8-5 Leafs Rangers game from last week. Something that'll racket up my heart rate and make me stress eat. Of course, I'm not the one who has to play the game, so maybe my opinion doesn't really matter. But our second game of the week, um, the boys played the New York Rangers in Nationwide. The Rangers games, I think, are always a little bit heated, um, not just because of Rick Nash, but because we're division rivals and, you know, it's goalie, <laughs> a real goalie battle, uh, which this game was. Uh, we came out on top 3-1, but it was close I, for a very long time. First things first, Hannah Kynan was out this game. Um, Dalte was in. Tortorella said it had nothing to do with Hannah Kynan's play in the game against Carolina, and that Dalte just deserved the time. Um, but even though Hannah Kynan was back by the next game, if I was him, and I knew it was between me and an older, more experienced player who really, really doesn't want to go back to Cleveland, I'd be a little bit worried. But on to the game. Seconds into the game, uh, Mount Calvert scores the first goal, uh, though it's then waved off as goaltender interference, which was honestly a well-caught call. It was definitely a goal. He was all up in the crease and all over Lundquist. After that, we were a little bit slow. Uh, it was a lot of pecking away. Near the end of the first, uh, a Rangers player was able to get it in, and near the end of the second, uh, Seth Jones was able to get it in, but 
It was just a hellish grind where we just could not get the puck into the net. Even when nearly every jacket on the ice is right in front of the net, just trying to chip in the puck. Then, halfway to the third, Panarin did some beautiful stick work, walked in, and was able to slip a fantastic whip of a shot past King Henrik, making the game 2-1 Jackets and securing his first goal as a Columbus Blue Jacket in Nationwide. So he got his own cannon. Honestly, I could not have asked for anything more. Said the cat was able to put in an empty netter to make it 3-1, but really, at its core, it was a goalie game. The goalies won and lost this game for their team. In fact, Lundqvist and Bob were literally tied 25-25 for shots against at the end of the second period. Some of the things I think were really key to the win were uh, the grind, how the boys kept pushing and didn't seem to tire, especially our veterans who have been stepping up after letting the rookies really uh, set the pace for the first couple games. And then also how few penalties we got. The Rangers have a near deadly power play. And with the new enforcement of rules and the new rules overall, some teams have been really messed up by it. Um, we got five minor penalties this game, but only one was for slashing. And uh, one of them was canceled out by a penalty by the Rangers. Also, uh, credit where credit's due, our penalty kill looks sick. Calvert and Dubinsky are really, really good. Uh, we've been able to get some really good shots on goal during when we're shorthanded. It's very nice. And just speaking of Calvert, <laughs> this summer before the season, especially after we brought out Hartnell and let Gagner go, there was a lot of talk about how old Calvert is and like, is he really worth it? And I feel like any time that I dad talk him, he immediately like reminds me why we still like him and why I still like him. But he's really been hustling out there. He's been setting the pace rather than just following it. And Seth Jones said that he was one of the reasons they were so energized. It just looks to me like someone wants to be re-signed. Yeah? <laughs> Our final game of the week was in Minnesota, uh, the so-called Hockey State. And it was the world's hole opener, where we got to rain on their parade in a 5-4 overtime win. Which, of course, means that the Wild have still not lost a home opener in regulation yet. This game was weird because it wasn't supposed to be easy the wild are good obviously they had 12 game win streak last year and they made the playoffs of the second seed but half their team was out with injuries <laughs> we were supposed to be able to go in and win that game fairly easily but if there's one thing the wild can do it's adapt overall uh this was not the best game gameplay was very sporadic there were a decent number of really dumb luck goals from both teams uh, and, but also, importantly, this game was not like some other games we've had recently where uh, Sergei Borowski has to come in there and save our lives. It was more offense, you know, making it matter if they could score goals or D blocking shots. Bob was not in top form, and our players were able to compensate for that, which shows that the team is growing, that we don't always have to rely on Bob. Obviously, he's still incredibly important to us as a team. You can't win a game without a goaltender, but... This is good, if we want to be good and go far. Cam Atkinson said in the scrum that we're a resilient group, uh, and that's right. We might not have an Austin Matthews, we might not have a Connor McDavid, but we work hard. As dumb as cliche as it sounds, we really do have grit. <laughs> the winning goal of the game was scored by Alexander Winberg. Alexander Winberg, if you will. And the primary assist was Panarin, who, once again, had three assists in this game. He's now had two games with three assists, which is apparently more than he had in his entire two years as a Blackhawk. Interesting. Uh, the lines are back to normal this game, and that Paw Patrol line, it's looking really good. Also in this game, Gabriel Carlson got injured. Uh, they have not disclosed what his injury is yet, but he's been placed on IR, which means he won't be able to be taken off of that until next Saturday at the earliest. Um, so they have recalled Marcus Nidavara from Cleveland. He is currently in Winnipeg. I think he's going to play. I think he played in Winnipeg with uh, the Monsters, or he's going to, something like that. And he's just going to hang out there because we play Winnipeg on Tuesday. And uh, But it's worrying because... Nudabar can only play four more NHL games before he has to pass waivers to go back to Cleveland. So this is not the best situation. Regardless, it's going to be Nudabar and Scott Harrington 
battling it out for that 6th B spot right next to Ryan Murray until Carlson gets better at the least. We really need to work on our power play. Uh, Tortorella on Saturday said that it was too cute and it needs to go back to basic simple play, ugly play, and I agree. We look great and the passes are beautiful, but we need to shoot the puck more. Also, this is a bit shoehorned in, but I read it while I was writing the script and I'm not sure where else to put it, uh, but Zach Lewinsky might be hurt. He has appeared to be fighting through pain during the back-to-back, -back, and he's been able to keep playing, obviously, but uh, <laughs> this isn't good. We don't have a ton of NHL-ready D-men, and so all of our D-men honestly need to stay as healthy as possible. <laughs> but in general, fear aside, injuries aside, we look okay. We don't look good. We don't look terrible. We're having to battle it out and fight for some wins that I think should have been much easier for us. But that just might mean that we're still not completely meshing. But even if we were completely meshing, according to Tortorella, no one's happy with play. Which means that the team knows it has to be better. And... Wow. But Miguel gets said actually this morning on the CBJ and 30 podcast that we're finding ways to win, even when we're not playing our best. And isn't that the important part? We know we're not looking great and we're not willing to settle for looking good. That's a culture shift and it's one that needs to happen if a team's going to be good. And I think we can really be good. Thank you so much for watching. Click like if you liked it. Click subscribe if you loved it. I'm Lydia. This is Cannonfire. And remember, good is the enemy of great.